Let's take a look at these scales questions. Most of them are non-calculator. Uh, there are one or two where you can use a calculator, but I'll mention that when the time comes. So find the lengths of these shapes. They've conveniently put a ruler up against them. So we can see that that is three centimeters. That is one centimeter. For the blue triangle, that goes up to two centimeters. The yellow oval, we'll call that two centimeters as well. Whereas the, uh, I think that's an octagon, that is one centimeter. This square goes up to 2.5. Some of these, the one or two that they're quite a, few, a tiny bit difficult to read. This one's fairly clear though. That's 0 0.9 centimeters. This one goes 3.5 just beyond it. So that's 3.6 centimeters. This triangle is one point. It's not, it's certainly not 1.5. So that's one less I'd say, which is 1.4 centimeters. And uh, this one's a kind of hard to read because um, this part here, is not tight to the ruler. So we're just gonna to have to be a bit careful with this one, but I would imagine they would accept perhaps 6.3 or um, 6.4 for this one, or perhaps even 6.2. Uh, let's take the uh, average and just go for 6.3 centimeters for that one. 3A, again, we're just gonna to have to uh, see where the edge comes on this and I would say that's probably four or 4.1 centimeters. This one here, I would say that, that was two centimeters. 3C, that's one centimeter. How long is the string of 10 cubes? Well, you can see that it's 10 centimeters long. So one cube is one centimeter. Let's have a look at some of these thermometers. So as we can see, the mercury in the th thermometer has gone up to 20, so that's 20 degrees C. Here it looks like it's gone up to 70 degrees C. 5C, 40 degrees C. 6A, um, here we're in Fahrenheit, but I mean, it doesn't matter whether we're reading Fahrenheit or Celsius, just where does it go up to? Um, so this looks like, a, uh, 190, 80, 70. So that's 60 degrees Fahrenheit and that is 90 degrees Fahrenheit. This here, I'm struggling to read it, but I can see that here it's gone into triple figures. So 100, 110, 20, 30, 40, that's 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Question number seven. So again, we can see that from 140 to 150, oh, we're just going up in one. So 141, 142, 143, I would say that, that is, um, sorry, not 143, uh, 144, but just 43, 44. So that is 44 degrees Celsius. And this one here looks like we are 67 degrees Celsius. For 7C, Again, it's really hard to read these really accurately because you, because the uh, the mercury in the thermometer is not right up into the right in the scale itself. But uh, so I would say that that was probably naught point sorry uh, seven degrees Celsius, not naught point seven seven degrees. We're going up in ones. Eight A again, quite hard to call. But if we just take this reading here, then that to me looks about. Uh, 44 degrees Fahrenheit and for 8B kind of hard to tell on this one but it looks pretty much halfway between 50 and 60 so I'm going to go for 55 degrees Fahrenheit on that one there. Here 8C it's certainly less than halfway between 110 and 120 so I'm just going to estimate that that's about 113 or 114 um, I'm sure both answers are acceptable. If not, they should be. Question number nine. So we need to state what they read on both scales. So this one on the Celsius, that is uh, 67 degrees Celsius. And for Fahrenheit, much harder to read on the Fahrenheit. Um, so I would say that's about 153 degrees Fahrenheit. For 9B, I would say that that's 40 degrees Celsius. 
and I would say that is about 104, 105 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm sure both answers are acceptable. And for 9C, that is 50 degrees Celsius. And I would say that was 121, 122. Let's go with 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Question number 10. Um, reading the thermometer is not the easiest task here, but I think for part A, we can assume that it uh, lines up here, which is 7, 8, 9, yeah, 7 degrees C here. And later on in the day, uh, I think that that lines up here, which is 11, 12, 13, 14 degrees C. We also need to work out the difference and whether it's an increase or a decrease. Well, it has certainly gone up, so it's increased by the difference, which is 14 take away seven. So that's an increase of seven degrees Celsius. So what temperature is shown in, in Celsius and Fahrenheit? So that's 40 degrees Celsius. And that is 100 and oh, really hard, hard to say, but I'm just going to go with halfway between 100 and 110, which is 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So the temperature is set to drop by 18 degrees Fahrenheit in 12 hours. So if I subtract 18 from 105, uh, then that comes to 87 degrees Fahrenheit. But then again, you might get a different answer if you didn't think that it was exactly 105 there. Sorry, that is the question uh, B1. So B2, what temperature will it be in Celsius in uh, 12 hours? Well, again, there's a few assumptions here. First of all, we're assuming that uh, we started off at 105. Um, so that takes us down to 87, which takes us, again, there's a fair bit of guesswork here. So hopefully the mark scheme allows a little bit of leeway, but I would go along with, let's just call that 30, might be 31 degrees Celsius. So what's the temperature drop in Celsius? Well, it's dropped from 40 to 30, which is 10 degrees. But um, if you've not got all of these answers exact, I mean, I'm not even convinced that my answers are spot on, hopefully, it will all come out in the wash and the overall temperature drop, whether it's 9, 10, 11, should all be acceptable answers in my opinion. Question number 12, let's take a look at the uh, the capacities here. So here it goes up to 600 and that is millilitres. Here is 100 millilitres. Here we've got 1000 millilitres, otherwise known as one litre. Here we've got, that's uh, so if this line here is 50, then the line between 50 and 100 is 75 millilitres. Here we've, this line here is 150, so that is, sorry, it's not 150, it's 850, so that is 825 millilitres. And here we're halfway between 500 and 600, so that is 550 millilitres. Question number 14, how much is in each measuring cylinder? So we've got 600 and 300. Half of the contents of the left measuring cylinder, so half of 600 is uh, 300, are poured into the one on the right. So therefore the 600 now becomes 300 and the 300 becomes 600. One third of the contents of the right, so the right is now 600, a third of 600 is 600 divided by three, which is 200. So 200 are poured into the left. So therefore 600 becomes 400 and the 300 becomes 500. Question number 15. So the uh, scale here is showing 900 grams. Here it's showing 300 grams. Here it's showing 600 grams. Here, we've just checked we're going up in 100, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yep, so that is 700 grams. Again, just checking that each increment is 100, so 900. So that is 1,000 grams, also known as a kilogram. And here, 100 grams. Question number 17. Uh, here is ounces, but again, it's just reading scales. Dead easy, so this is 6. This one, we um, just need to think about the scale, so 6, so we're not going up in ones, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, so that is 22 ounces. And 6, 8, 10, 12, so again, we're going up in two, so that is uh, 14 ounces. 
one pound is 16 ounces so which of the above is heavier than a pound or well, this is lighter this is heavier and this is much lighter question number 18 so what does each apple weigh so here we're going up in 100s and I think we need to assume that's halfway between 0 and 100 so that is 50 grams on this on the left hand scale on the right hand scale that is 150 so the difference in weight is 100 grams when an apple rots it becomes lighter which apple is more likely to have gone rotten uh, well it was going to be the apple on the left hand scale because it's lighter Miriam takes a bite out of the apple on the right and its weight decreases to 125 so it was 150 now it's gone down to 125 grams so therefore she must have taken a bite of 25 grams and question number nine what measurements are displayed on the measuring cylinder and the scales well on the measuring cylinder that is 300 milliliters and on the scales that is 600 grams so we know that for b if 300 milliliter, milliliters weighs 600 grams then one milliliter is 300 times less than 300 so we need to divide 600 by 300 so one milliliter is going to weigh two grams 300 milliliters of another liquid is added the other liquid is half as heavy as the original liquid so how much is in the measuring cylinder well if we add another 300 to the 300 we'll have 600 and if it's half as heavy then it means uh, it's going to weigh 300 not 600 and 600 plus the 300 means the scales will now read 900 grams